Welcome to Diana in the Pink. My name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant. And I specialize in women's health and gynecology. In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 words that you really need to know if you're pregnant. But before we get started, if you are new to Diana in the Pink, we talk a lot about being a mom, pregnancy, and also women's health. So make sure to subscribe to Diana in the Pink and remember to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now, when you become pregnant, you learn a lot about the entire field of pregnancy medicine just by experiencing being pregnant. Your doctors, your nurses, PAs, midwives are all going to be saying a lot of medical jargon and there are going to be words that might be new to you and unless you ask, they sometimes assume you know what they mean. So I want you to know that it's completely okay to ask them questions. If they say a word or are talking about something that you don't understand, it's their job to teach you. But in this video, I'm going to go over words that are used all the time when you are pregnant that you really do want to know. But before we start, jump down to the comments section and let me know where you are coming from. Are you pregnant? If so, how far along are you? Is this your first pregnancy? Is it your fifth? Or are you just thinking about getting pregnant? I love reading about your comments. So let's start with number one, which is conception. So early in your pregnancy, your OB or midwife might talk about conception. This is the process of becoming pregnant. Technically, it's when the egg and the sperm come together to form a single cell. Conception is also known as fertilization, meaning that the egg is fertilized by the sperm and usually happens in the fallopian tubes within a few hours to a few days after intercourse. You know, and I didn't really count the word intercourse, but just in case, in intercourse means sex. Number two, uterus. This is often referred to as the womb. The uterus is the reproductive organ where the baby develops. It has the remarkable capability of stretching to about 500 times its usual size and its weight grows from just a few ounces to over two pounds during pregnancy. Amazingly, by six weeks after the baby is delivered, the uterus is shrunken back down to its normal pre-pregnancy size. Number three, cervix. The cervix is the lower end of your uterus. This is the part that softens, thins, and then dilates before and during labor to allow the baby to come out. When you are nearing the end of your pregnancy and when you're in labor, your OB and your nurses will check your cervix to see how thin and open it is so that they know how labor is progressing and when it's time for you to push the baby out. I'm going to raise you down. Okay? No! Number four, amniotic fluid. Now this is the fluid that surrounds the baby in your uterus. It's a clear, slightly yellowish liquid that helps to protect the baby and the umbilical cord. It allows the baby to move more freely within the uterus, which helps the baby to develop muscles and strong bones. It also helps the lung to develop and it keeps the baby warm. Early on in your pregnancy, amniotic fluid is made of a complex water-like fluid made of proteins, electrolytes, immunoglobulins, and vitamins from the mom's body. But around 20 weeks, the amniotic fluid transitions into fluid made up of the baby's urine and lung secretions. The amniotic sac is like a water balloon holding the amniotic fluid. And when you hear the term water breaking, it's like the water balloon has popped or is leaking and amniotic fluid is coming out. Now I'm going to take a second here to let you know that if you are enjoying this video, I've actually made an entire pregnancy series taking you through pregnancy week by week. I go over baby development, symptoms you might be feeling, and so much more. So I'm going to put a card right above here and also at the end of this video that will take you to this series. So go over and check it out and then come back each week for an update of where you are in your pregnancy. So now let's move on to number five, embryo. This is the name given to a fertilized egg from the time of conception until eight weeks of pregnancy. By around six weeks, the embryo has a heartbeat that we can actually hear with an ultrasound. Number six, fetus. Now this is the term used to describe a baby from eight weeks until the baby is born. As for you, you get to refer to both the embryo and the fetus as your baby. Number seven, miscarriage. Now this is a word that I hope that your OB never has to say to you. A miscarriage is when an embryo or a fetus dies before 20 weeks of pregnancy. Most of the time, if a miscarriage happens, it is completely beyond your control and it is not because of something that you did wrong. A few common causes for miscarriages are chromosomal abnormalities, medical problems with the mother, environmental exposures, or certain medications. That 
being said, there are a handful of things that you shouldn't do because they can increase your chances of having a miscarriage. So if you are pregnant, do not smoke, use drugs, or drink alcohol. Talk to your OB about any medications that you are taking, preferably before you get pregnant. I also wanna point out that exercise, sex, going to work, eating spicy foods, or anxiety and depression, none of these can cause miscarriages. Number eight, fetal heart tones. Now this is the medical word for your baby's heartbeat. Most times when you go to your OB appointments, they will check for fetal heart tones and they'll usually use a small Doppler ultrasound that uses sound waves to listen to your baby's heartbeat. When you can hear a solid and strong heartbeat, it's very reassuring to your OB and to you that the baby is doing well. Number nine, birth canal. This is the passageway that the baby travels through during birth. It is made up of the cervix and the vagina. And finally, number 10, Braxton Hicks contractions. These are practice contractions where your uterus tightens and relaxes. Braxton Hicks contractions help to tone your uterus to prepare it for real labor. Some women mistake Braxton Hicks contractions for real labor contractions, but here's how you can tell the difference. Braxton Hicks contractions are irregular and don't get closer or more intense over time, and they usually go away with rest. Real labor contractions become more intense and more regular over time, and they continue even when you are resting. Sometimes people refer to Braxton Hicks contractions as false labor. Now, I really had a hard time stopping at just 10. I feel like there are so many other important words and phrases that are important to know. So I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video where I will be talking about the words that you will need to know before you go into labor. You wanna know them so that you'll know what your medical team is talking about when it's your turn to deliver your baby. So make sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when that video comes out, but you can only do that if you subscribe. So make sure to do that. Now, as promised, I'm going to link to my week-by-week -week pregnancy series, which is right here. So you click on that, and I will see you over there.